should be building more bridges, not more walls, and we should treat our fellow human beings with dignity and respect. Pope Francis is right. Donald Trump and Sheriff Apeo are wrong. The so-called immigration problem we face today at this particular moment is a trumped up and exaggerated problem. The Pew Center, for example, has found that net migration from Mexico is negative. That means more people are leaving the United States to go back to Mexico and in fact that are coming here from Mexico. We don't need a wall and we don't need barbed wire. We need to fix our broken <coughs> criminal justice system. And here are just a few of the things that we need to do. First and foremost, it goes without saying that we need comprehensive immigration reform. We need to take 11 million undocumented people out of the shadows, out of fear, and we need to provide them with legal protection. And we need to provide them with a path toward citizenship. And let me be as clear as I can be. If Congress does not do its job in passing comprehensive immigration reform, I will use all of the powers, the executive powers of the White House to do everything that I can. During the first 100 days of my presidency, I will expand President Obama's Deferred Action of Childhood Arrivals, DACA, and the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, DAPA. And I will end the deportation regime, which is dividing so many families and sowing so much fear. The rounding up of families that happened around Christmas time and continues to happen must end, and as president, I will end it. I will fight to end private prisons and private detention facilities and have introduced legislation in the Congress to do just that. Corporations should not be profiteering off of the incarceration of people in this country, including the incarceration of immigrant families and children. We must always protect vulnerable people, and that is children in general, seniors in general, and that means children who come to our border to escape unspeakable violence from Latin America. And we just met with a young woman today uh, who came from El Salvador. Let us not forget that those children who arrived at our border to escape drug gang, drug gang violence from places like Honduras and other Central American countries deserve the right to asylum. And I would strongly disagree with Secretary Clinton on that issue. Sending children who have braved all kinds of dangers to escape some of the most violent regions in the world, telling them simply that they have to go back, is in some cases sending them back to a death sentence, and that is wrong. Fundamentally, we need an immigration policy that upholds the safety and dignity of all people and that works to bring families together, not tear them apart. And that is why I strongly support allowing deported immigrants to return to the United States if they would have been allowed to stay if the 2013 Comprehensive Immigration Bill would have made it into law. We need to reunite spouses who have been separated by deportation. We need to reunite children with their parents. And any other response is not what this country is about. Reuniting families by allowing deported family members to return to the United States is to me a necessary part 
of any humane immigration policy. At the same time, we need to crack down on people and companies that exploit and abuse undocumented people in this country. 2008, I had the experience of seeing that firsthand. I was in Immokalee, Florida, where undocumented tomato pickers and growers were treated in almost slave-like conditions. And in fact, there was a charge made by a U.S. attorney prosecution on slavery charges in the United States. And that is why we need immigration, which gives rights and protections to immigrant communities, not exploitive guest worker programs like those that form the heart of the 2007 immigration bill, a bill that the Southern Poverty Law, Law Center described as akin to slavery, the guest worker provision. No person who was exploited or abused economically, physically, or sexually should be left without strong protections under the law. Having a fair and humane immigration policy does not mean we do not have a secure border. Of course we have a secure border and must have a secure border. But it certainly does not mean building a wall across the U.S.-Mexican border. <clears throat> Using modern technology like, like high-grade camera and thermal imaging detection, we can secure our borders while protecting the rights and needs of border communities. While we create a secure border and create a humane immigration policy, we also have to address the policies that lead to poverty and violence in Latin America. Now all of you know that I have strongly opposed NAFTA, not only for what it has done to workers in this country, but also to what it has done to workers and farmers in Mexico. And the fact is that as a result of NAFTA, some two to three million small farmers in Mexico who were earning a living, who had some dignity, were thrown off of their jobs into the cities and many of them came across the border. We also need to rethink the war on drugs. Instead of treating substance abuse and drug addiction as a criminal matter, we need to treat it as a public health issue. We will never deal with substance abuse by locking people away or by engaging in military-like conflict in Latin America. Let me close by reiterating, we need immigration reform that keeps families together, that ends the fear of deportation, and that